What's up, guys? This is Brandon with Sonic Electronics. Is that serious? <laughs> yeah. I'm Alan. Today, we got another Q&A for you. Uh, the question that we have is, what is a base processor and how do you wire it? That's you from, tell them, Brendan. That's from Os... You tell them. <laughs> that's from Osvaldo G. Well, here's a base processor from MVX. This is the XBBR. And one way you can connect, actually there's only one way to connect it, my bad. So is that uh, an XBR? Yeah, it's the XBR Base EQ Processor Reconstruction Device. And uh, basically how it wires up is you have a ground, 12 volt power, and remote. So if you have an aftermarket car stereo, you're gonna have a blue white, which is your remote, that's gonna go right to the processor. You have a yellow wire, which is your 12 volt constant, that's gonna go right to the processor. And then you have a ground, which is gonna go right to the processor. So you're basically tying in power for your processor right to the radio itself. Now, how do we get signal so it can be reconstructed? <laughs> well, you tell them, man. Really. Go ahead, tell them. So, on the back of your aftermarket car stereo, you're gonna have a subwoofer pre-out. And you're gonna have a little tiny one and a half foot RCA. No. Or that no. little one footer RCA that MVX has that we use all the time. Where would you put that if you had a one foot RCA? <laughs> Shove it behind your dash. <laughs> <laughs> That's only if you have a Scion XP, it'll fit right in there. But usually you want this to go by your amplifier to be accessible so you can actually adjust it. So you're just gonna utilize the RCAs that are going out of your sub pre out to the input of your mono block amplifier, unplug those, go into the input. And then you can use a little jumper RCA to the output of the XBBR to the input of your monoblock amplifier. Is that how it hooks up, yeah. Alan? Or whatever base reconstruction unit you're using. Pretty much the same for all of them. Now, we got two adjustments on here. And Alan's gonna take that Well, out. here we have frequency. And over here we have narrow and wide. I'm sure you can understand what narrow and wide means. Narrow? You know, narrow, wide. wide. So what you basically can do is select the frequency essentially that you want to affect. So you've got 30 hertz to 90 hertz. So uh, for this application, we want, uh, we want 30 hertz. It's a boom, boom. So we want, some, we want some 30 hertz action. So on this piece of paper that I have here that I Google searched, there's a lot of things you can find on Google. It's free information. I got printed out this little thing. It's kind of hard to see, so I do apologize. Hopefully our cameraman can zoom in all the way. You can see the bandwidth, which is what this refers to. And you can see that this is wide bandwidth, medium bandwidth, and narrow bandwidth. So like if you were to, and I'm gonna try to do this upside down. I'm gonna draw 30 here. So we selected 30 Hertz. When it's wide, it's also affecting other frequencies around it, as you can see, because it's it's wide. The more narrow it gets, it kind of just starts to only affect 30 hertz, not as much around it. So it's fairly simple um, on, on adjusting it. Uh, what specific frequency or how narrow or how wide, I can't necessarily answer that for you. Um, it obviously depends on the application, a particular frequency that you're trying to manipulate, mm -hmm. um, and how much, how wide or how narrow the frequencies around it you want to manipulate as well too. So if you want maybe 30 hertz, but you're also trying to manipulate 20 and 40, maybe you want it a little bit wider. If you only want to manipulate 30 only, maybe you want it pretty freaking narrow. Um, also, Brendan will show you there's a cool little bass knob that this particular guy comes with, and uh, it has a subsonic filter on it, which allows you to cut off frequencies set below a certain frequency point that you set, so it will not play them. So it acts as a floor, basically, so your sub- So you can cap it. it. Exactly. So if you want to select 20, like 30 hertz, and you don't want it to play 30 on down, you can adjust that, so it only plays 30 on up, um, or whatever frequency you select. And then it also has your level adjustment of how much level you're affecting on that particular given frequency that you selected. So uh, I'm not, on this particular one, I'm not sure. It just has a minimum, maximum. I'm not sure exactly what uh, the level of adjustment on it. It might be like uh, plus six dB, maybe. Yeah, I'm just know. guessing. Um, but that's pretty much how it works. It's, it's pretty simple. Yeah, and the bass processors are a great add-on, especially if you listen to a lot of music that uh, doesn't really have the low end recorded very well, like classic rock. It sort of brings that to life. And uh, that way you can adjust it to what you like and how your ears like hearing it. Um, but other than that, I think that's about it on the pr base processor for you. 
Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's a, it's a great piece, like Brendan said, if, you, if you're listening to a, like a, a particular genre of music that's not recorded with a lot of bass, um, you know, this allows you to kind of put bass, to emphasize those frequencies that are kind of there. Exactly. So um, other than that, I mean, you could always turn it all the way down and not really use it. So it's definitely good for uh, a specific uh, type of music or whatever the case may be. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple. There is other versions of this same type of thing. There's some that are like uh, similar that are, you know, dash mountable. This one's something that can obviously go near the amplifier. There's ones that are even a little bit more sophisticated in this, but mm -hmm. this would typically be more of your just everyday simple in and out bass restoration process. Yep, and that's about it guys. So hopefully you liked the video. Uh, make sure to subscribe to our Q&A series. And once again, this is Brendan. I'm Alan. With Sonic Electronics. See ya.